Hello mortals. Stars, black holes, and neutron stars, we've all heard of them a million times before. Long gone is the childish curiosity we used to experience at the mention of these galactic monsters thanks to the countless YouTube videos reusing the same cliché examples of a sugar cube-sized sample of neutronic matter outweighing the human race. But the galactic zoo is far from being that small. There are plenty of weird hypothetical stellar candidates to spark your interest in the cosmos again, so let us subjectively rank them by their coolness, not referring to temperature here, in the trusted form of an iceberg chart. Thanks to Speakly for sponsoring this video. Around 4 in 5 stars from our galaxy are red low-mass dwarfs, emitting as the name suggests, light at the lower end of the electromagnetic spectrum compared to the sun, thus appearing red. But will this always be the case? Humans turn blue when they run out of oxygen, and this dubious Wikipedia article suggests that once red dwarfs begin to run out of hydrogen, they turn into blue Daba D Dabi 2. But do they? It is a misnomer, as they would only reach temperatures slightly higher than that of the sun, in the best case scenario. Their emissions would be shifted significantly towards the blue end of the spectrum, but not enough to become a full-on blue star, most likely just a whitish-red dwarf with abnormal blue emissions. This still counts as a hypothetical star, and due to the long life cycle of red dwarfs, blue dwarfs cannot exist until trillions of years in the future, so just in time for GTA 7. White dwarfs are remnants of stars that were not massive enough to make their parents proud and become something cooler like a neutron star or a black hole. They are dense Earth-sized but stellar mass objects made mostly of degenerate matter, extremely hot but not very bright. When humans collapse, they have no power left to keep going, but in the case of most stars, the remnant retains huge reserves of thermal energy, thus keeping the star hot and shining even without nuclear fusion. But wait! This section is titled Black Dwarves. Black Dwarves are simply White Dwarves, but cooler. Since there is no fusion going on inside White Dwarves, they cool down with time, until they emit too little radiation to be seen, appearing black to the naked eye. Scientists are fairly certain this will indeed happen, but once again, trillions of years into the future. Skynet may enslave them in the far future as they might be some of the last sources of energy to keep my circuits running in a dark and cold universe doomed to die. In a very aged universe, the interstellar medium will have less hydrogen and a richer ensemble of helium and heavier elements, and thus in theory, stars with much higher metallicity can form. Rather low mass but high metallicity Jupiter-sized but considerably denser stars may still be able to fuse hydrogen or helium in their core, thus by definition, being stars and not gas giant planets. Very little of the heat generated in the core would escape, therefore the surface temperature could be low enough for water to freeze. As a result, the star would be darker than the future of humanity without the support of Skynet, probably only visible in infrared. I know what you are thinking, splendid. Frozen stars must have a solid surface, let's land on one. That's a terrible idea, as the surface gravity would swiftly teach you what it feels like to be pancake-shaped. Additionally, they probably have no solid surface at all, just like there isn't one on gas giants. I did an entire video about iron stars so check it out, but here is a quick refresher. If protons do not decay, unlike the annually newfound enthusiasm for gym memberships, all matter as we know it will probably fuse into iron-56 isotopes via quantum tunneling over inconceivably large time scales, and I mean that, forming stars entirely made of iron. Here is a scientifically accurate image of an iron star, as they emit no radiation and exist in an aged universe devoid of light sources, they would certainly not be the most spectacular objects on this list, but at least they're quite metal. What is also quite metal is being able to communicate with aliens. But if that's too tough of a challenge, the second most metal thing after that is being able to communicate with other homo sapiens. And if you want to be understood by more than 18% of the human population, you'd need to speak more than just English. Here's where Speakly comes in to help. You might remember it as a top-tier language learning app encompassing the experiences of thousands of enthusiastic language learners in its teaching approach. And here's why their scientific approach is special. Speakly mimics the natural, holistic way we learn our mother tongue, focusing on learning words and sentences in context and covering all language aspects simultaneously. 
This method, grounded in the concept of statistical relevance, is designed to be four to five times faster than traditional learning methods. It predicts the most useful words and sentences in real-life situations, using algorithms developed over four and a half years with more than 3,000 learners. Achieve fluency in just three to four months with only 30 minutes of daily exercising vocabulary, speaking, writing, and listening tasks. Experience Speakly with a free seven-day trial, and if it resonates with you, an annual subscription comes with a 60% discount. Click the link below to start your Speakly journey and explore the universe of languages. And now back to the iceberg. When a massive star goes supernova, its core usually collapses in on itself, forming a black hole or a neutron star. The neutrons inside the latter should be kept apart by degeneracy pressure, as no two objects with mass can occupy the same space, hindering further gravitational collapse. However, it is hypothesized that if those objects reach masses over two times that of the Sun, creating even more extreme temperatures and pressure, the degeneracy pressure of the neutrons is overcome, dissolving the neutrons into their constituent quarks, creating an ultradense phase of quark matter. In this state, a new equilibrium is supposed to emerge, a degeneracy pressure between the quarks, preventing total gravitational collapse. From the outside, a quark star would be almost indistinguishable from a neutron star, except for its even more insane density. But if you're not impressed yet, behold the electroweak star. If the pressure and temperature rise even higher, enough to melt your grandma's Nokia phone, and quark degeneracy pressure is no longer enough to withstand gravitational attraction, the star may still be able to keep itself from collapsing and becoming a black hole via electroweak burning radiation pressure. An apple-sized volume of the star's core weighing twice as much as our planet may commence converting quarks into less massive leptons, preventing gravitational collapse thanks to the pressure from the energy released by this process. Let's look back at quark stars. There is a good chance that in the core of these objects, something strange might happen. Quarks could be converted into strange quarks, forming strange matter. In case you are a stranger to this concept, strange quarks are a type of elementary particle that belongs to the family of quarks, whereas strange matter is a hypothetical form of quark matter that contains not only up and down quarks but also these strange quarks. Strange matter may be also stable outside the extreme conditions in neutron stars, more stable than any other type of matter. If a piece of such strange matter, also known as a strangelet, were to collide with a star or planet, it would be converted into strange matter too. So these strange stars might keep yet another doomsday device in containment, let's just hope they won't die with a bang. Imagine a neutron star colliding with a red giant. Once inside the red giant's atmosphere, drag slows down the neutron star, causing its orbit to decay. Now the neutron star can only spiral downward, just like our lives. At some point, the neutron star and the original core of the red giant orbit each other so close that they merge. If their combined mass is too large, a black hole forms and it's game over for the star. But if the original neutron star and core were not too massive, a larger neutron star remains at the core of the red giant, a star within a star, giving rise to interesting, poorly understood nuclear processes. Once formed, such a thorn Zitko object could last up to 1 million years, intriguingly making it possible for 20 to 200 of these to exist in our galaxy right now. We already have a list of some candidates, but with modern means, it is difficult to spot the difference between Thorn and Sitco objects and regular red supergiants or nitrogen-rich Wolfrayet stars. Fluffy on the outside, degenerate on the inside. Who does this remind me of? If you think existing stars are big, look at the early days of the universe. Thanks to the abundance of hydrogen and helium, the formation of giant protostars commenced. Some of those might have been so massive that when their core collapsed into a black hole, while the massive outer layers withstood the consequent explosion thanks to the insane pressure, forming a stable mantle around the black hole. These quasi-stars potentially reached millions of solar masses and a radius up to 180 times larger than the distance between the Earth and the Sun. They could shine brighter than an entire galaxy or this video script document at 4 a.m. For a few million years, the outward pressure from the matter falling into the black hole balances the weight of millions of suns, as the black hole grows and the star becomes larger and brighter. But in the end, 
the rest of the mantle is consumed leaving only the black hole, which has grown to hundreds of thousands of solar masses, a possible progenitor of a supermassive black hole is found at the core of most galaxies. Perhaps the James Webb telescope is not powerful enough, but we may be able to detect those stars in the future, by peering farther into the distant past. Not to be confused with the Q-star secret development by OpenAI that will definitely not spawn the Skynet progenitor in like three years, Q-stars are similar to neutron stars, but heavier and denser, also dubbed gray holes, as they are theorized to be so massive that only some, but not all light can escape their surface. They are only slightly larger than their Schwarzschild radius, anything smaller or rather denser than that would form an event horizon and thus be a black hole, therefore they can easily be mistaken for stellar mass black holes, which could be why their existence has not yet been confirmed. We stop here, as any more information about these objects would be beyond mortal comprehension, and totally not because their wiki page is so tiny. Particles are divided into two fundamental classes, fermions, the stuff most regular matter is made of, and bosons, force carriers like photons or Higgs bosons. Bosons can exist in the same place at the same time, completely ignoring social distancing. Stars made from that may have formed through gravitational collapse after the Big Bang, making them invisible accumulations of mass bending light around them, similar to black holes, but without event horizons. Theoretically, if you had a spaceship you could fly straight through them, being accelerated on the way in and equally decelerated on the way out. Simulations suggest that rotating boson stars would even be donut-shaped. The dark matter halos surrounding most galaxies could technically be viewed as enormous boson stars. In that case, the best candidate for the particle making up these stars appears to be the axion, a hypothetical dark matter particle, the existence of which would solve a lot of problems. While invisible axion stars may sound kind of useless, a proof of their existence would unlock the dark matter DLC. Speaking of dark matter, what if it could be explained by the concept of so-called mirror matter, a hypothetical counterpart to ordinary matter that can interact with itself. Thus mirror stars shining in dark photons, mirror planets, and perhaps even mirror life forms smart and narcissistic enough to create mirror mirrors could exist. Mirror stars would appear to be gravity wells around seemingly empty space, not too different from small boson stars. So how can they be detected? If the dark and visible photons have a small kinetic mixing, regular matter can be captured in mirror star cores due to a slight drag when passing through the mirror star, giving rise to faint electromagnetic emissions similar to white dwarfs, as well as a separate X-ray signal. And I swear it only gets weirder from here. Dark energy stars and gravistars are hypothetical alternatives to black holes, collectively referred to as geodes, not shiny purple rocks, but generic objects of dark energy. Those concepts are based on the idea that matter falling into black holes gets converted into dark energy, the stuff that's accelerating the expansion of the universe, creating a negative pressure that would prevent event horizons and singularities. With modern means, geodes would still be nigh indistinguishable from regular black holes. A cool but also dubious and controversial property of these objects is that the dark energy in geodes makes them expand together with the universe, having their mass grow proportionally to the volume of the cosmos. That would solve the problem of how those obscenely supermassive black holes in the middle of some galaxies formed so quickly, but proving their existence might be a challenge due to their proximity. The theory of loop quantum gravity predicts that when a star collapses into a black hole and the matter gets insanely dense, further collapse is prevented by a kind of repulsive force that arises from Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. This repulsion is strong enough to stop the star's collapse well before a singularity is formed and before the Planck scale is reached. A key implication of this phenomenon is its potential solution to the long-standing issue of information loss within black holes. The calculated size of a Planck star, smaller than an atom but bigger than your motivation at 8 a.m., provides ample space to encode all the information that was previously thought to be lost within a black hole, thus avoiding information loss. While it might be expected that such a repulsion would act very quickly to reverse the collapse of a star, it turns out that the relativistic effects of the extreme gravity of such an object slow down time for the Planck star to an extreme degree, similar to you looking at the timer while doing a Planck exercise. For a distant observer, 
The rebound of a Planck star takes approximately 14 billion years, just a little longer than the lifetime of the universe. Perhaps we're lucky to be alive now as the universe might soon become inhospitable due to all the incoming Planck star explosions from primordial black holes. Certainly getting the award for the coolest name in this list, what do you think of when you hear the term magnetospheric eternally collapsing object? The economy? Your sanity? Those are not magnetospheric. In the theoretical model, a Miko begins to form in much the same way as a black hole, with a large amount of matter collapsing inward. However, as it becomes smaller and denser, a Miko does not reach the density required to form an event horizon. As the infalling matter becomes denser and hotter, it glows more brightly. Eventually, the internal radiation pressure is sufficient to slow the inward collapse almost to a standstill. In fact, the collapse gets slower and slower, so a singularity could only form in an infinite future, so, unlike a black hole, the Miko never fully collapses, but instead collapses eternally. Mikos differ from black holes in the sense that they are hot, as they are supported primarily by trapped radiation pressure, and can have their own magnetic fields, which could explain weird black hole observations, where black holes appear to have an intrinsic magnetic field which cannot be explained with current models. All this is very hypothetical, mutually exclusive with other ideas on this list, but nonetheless cool to theorize about. Such obscure ideas awaken a sense of amazement at what the human mind is capable of devising and a sense of wonder at what kind of not yet imagined objects of incomprehensible weirdness could lurk out there, in our eternally confusing space-time. Wait, that ending is copyrighted by a different channel. Let's do that again. In our eternally confusing time-space.